So before we start learning Svelte, let's appreciate Svelte simplicity by creating a simple counter example using regular HTML and JavaScript. If you want to code along, you can open a new CodePen project. I strongly encourage you to code along and start building that muscle memory, be it learning Svelte or anything else. So we can start here by creating a simple p tag and pressing tab so Emmet can autocomplete. Then you can also add a button. Let's add an event listener on click, going to be increment. So let's add our script tag. Here we're going to declare count zero. We also need an increment function. Let's say count plus equals one, which is the same as saying count plus plus. We also need to update the UI because when you're writing regular HTML, CSS and JavaScript, we're in charge of updating and keeping track of the DOM. So we also have to say function update UI, we have to query the counter element, token for selector P, counter element dot inner text, it's going to be a template literal, so we can use variables inside, say clicked, click count times. Let's wait for Copen to update. But we have to call update UI. And it works. Congrats. So we can get even more advanced and we can have a computed property. Say ternary if it equals one. Say time or times. And that's how simple it is, but it's also really a chore having to keep track of everything here and doing it ourselves, right? Let's just ponder for a second how amazing it is that this is valid HTML in the first place, right? Because browsers are so smart and they fill the blanks for us. And this is also amazing because the Svelte syntax is really similar to this. Querying elements like this is really inefficient and you would do it at the top. But I wanted to show this because these are easy mistakes to make and could cause severe performance issues and unexpected bugs in your software. I love JavaScript, but every time you get into updating and keeping track of your data and updates to the DOM, it drains your enthusiasm and starts feeling like a chore. So this is where JavaScript frameworks come in and alleviate the pressure from us. So we can see the same example in Svelte. So we can copy the code we have here and open the Svelte repo. If you have anything here, just clear it out. And we can paste it in. Let's just move our markup to the bottom. It's just preference, you don't have to. So we can remove things we really don't need. Let's just keep the clicked part and we can just remove this. We also don't need update UR anymore. And let's just place click. We don't need a template literal because it's well to use the curly boys. And on click, we need the two dots. And then we can use the curly boys again and it should work. So Svelte is a superset of HTML, meaning it's like actual HTML and JavaScript, but with superpowers. And you can see how something like this can get very tedious and annoying quick. Svelte lets you write code in a declarative way, meaning you don't have to query elements and worry about keeping the state of your application in sync with the user interface. Svelte treats app.svelte as a single file or component. The script tag is where you write JavaScript, there's also a style tag for CSS and the rest is treated as HTML, just like in regular HTML. So the Svelte compiler takes the special app.svelte file and processes each part separately before compiling it into regular HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And inside the Svelte template you can use JavaScript expressions like count, times two and see the output directly. So this should be familiar if you ever use a templating language or a JavaScript framework like Angular and Vue. So we can add some styles to the bottom of app.svelte to see how this works. Say style. And we want to style the p tag, so we're going to say color teal. And it works the same, beautiful, right? In the REPL it won't work, but if you want SAS support, you just say lang scss. And if you're a TypeScript boy, you can go to the script tag and say lang ts. And also one thing worth noting is that in Svelte styles are scoped to the component by default, meaning any styles used in the component aren't going to affect other components or parts of your site. Of course, you can also have global styles and there's also global styles with nested components. So if you look at the CSS output, we can see how this works because Svelte generates this junk for us. And that's why every component has its own special styles that can't affect others.